Done the Parade, and he's leading. Done the Parade is in fifth in the points standings, and he is leading this race. And Seth Cole is sixth. I do know that. And Seth Cole is running in the fifth position. So we don't know. When the way the point system works here, anything can happen, and usually anything does happen. Now we saw these drivers go four wide for position. Will we see any four wide finishes? If we do, it's going to be a really cool finish. We'll we'll have to go and okay. Green flag is back out and already a few drivers are stepping out of line. Here we go, boys. Restart. Lap number eleven of twenty-nine. We got a long way to go. Colin Cropley is going to be a pain in the butt. Well, maybe not, because he didn't have any damage. So he might be up to racing speed. I don't see why he wouldn't be up at racing speed. But he won't be racing for position. It looks like he is slower, though. Let's see. No, he's not any slower. He is at racing speed. So he won't be fighting for position, but he will be a pain in the butt, because he will be a back marker. But then the parade got a pretty fair lead and it's not something you want to have. Here comes Jacob Gonzalez. I thought I heard spinning. Are we under caution? Let's wait and see if we're under caution. No, we're not under caution. Okay, I thought I heard some spinning. Oh, I might have. 37 is slow. Or he might have been involved in that wreck. I don't know. Let's quickly back and see what happened because I thought I heard someone spinning. Okay, I'm officially stupid because I forgot that that was one of the cars that was involved in the wreck. So he's just slow. But there goes Matt Bullock again for the lead. Oh, Kenny McCurry down on the apron. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That is definitely not good. We saw what happened uh, last week at Charlotte. Wow, he saved that. <laughs> Kenny McCurry is down on the apron for most of that turn. And we saw how well that worked at Charlotte. That caused a big one. I have an idea. Vote on which big one was bigger. Was Charlotte bigger or was this bigger? Okay, well, let me rephrase that. Was it more, um, was it, uh, yeah, which one was bigger? Not car-wise, but, you know, like, hard crash-wise. You know, which one was bigger? Navian Robinson goes for the lead, three wide for the lead again. Telling you what, this is an amazing race so far. It's wider than Tal. I'm sorry, Day Talladega is wider than Daytona, so um, I can easily see why this would be such an easy place to run three wide at, because you could barely go two wide at Daytona safely. Navian Robinson leading the race, 201 down the front stretch, 201 miles an hour, consistently running 200 through the turns. So we are consistently running 200 around this whole track. And we ducked down to 199 right there, but it was like for a split second. Here comes Pat Randall again. Great run by Pat Randall. He had the pole last race, but he was um, a little slower than the rest of the cars for some reason. I don't know. He got the pole. But here he is again. Right where he should be. Navy and Robinson third in points, leading the race. Holding off Pat Randall quite nicely, too. We saw in the opening stages of the race where Austin Raposo was able to hold everyone up. Uh, hold everyone off, rather, and um, get a good, um, get a good, get a good uh, lead and led for four laps. For lap 15, we still got time, so everyone can make their moves if they must, and Doug Shears decided to do it now. Maybe not, because here comes Kenny McCrory. And here comes our pole sitter, Austin Raposo, again. Kenny McCurry to the point. You go, Kenny. Show those ant boys that they're making a bad mistake by cutting you. They're four wide back there again. Oh, he slid. Oh, he can't do it. He didn't slide right. He almost slid right down onto Austin Raposo, but he couldn't. Pole sitter's back out in front, and there's Sean Gallagher, our points leader back there with Seth Cole behind Mark George. I believe uh, Seth Cole and Mark George are teammates for Cole and Bryant Motorsports. 
So yeah, there's that. So really, it's teammates working together with, um, well, it was until Seth decided, no, it still is. Seth Cole and Mark George working together for Cole and Bryant Motorsports as Sean Galgan, well, takes the lead. Will we have a repeat winner? Well, at Talladega, anything can happen. So we might have a repeat winner. Nathan Robinson is a great contender. So is Sean Galligan. Uh, Corey Long, I don't think he was involved in the wreck. So, he, yeah, Corey Long is somewhere back there. No, he's not. Oh, my goodness, that was close. That was a close one. Now, Corey Long was involved in the wreck, and I see a lap car. Oh, my goodness, here we go. That's Joseph Lombard. Lap trap. Traffic. Whoa, they got around him pretty fairly easy. They're split. They split him down the middle. And now he's being a bother to everyone else on the high line. These cars are going to start getting antsy to try and get around him. He's still being a bother to the people on the high line. And this track and the cars have spread out. One lap down car can change the whole face of a race, and oh my goodness, the pole, the, um, the pole sitter, Austin Raposo, was held up by him, so was Kenny McCurry. These guys have to do a lot of work if they want to get back to the front. I knew um, these two were back here somewhere, Matt Nate and Eric Morrell. So much the cars have spread out. Look at that. Now they can catch back up. I mean, they haven't lost the draft or anything, so they couldn't ca catch back up to the pack. And the way that the front, um, I believe that's the front nine, the way they're running, you know, it won't be too long before those other drivers can catch up. So, John ja Worry leading now with uh, Joseph Bryant right behind them. I'm sorry, I, I thought that Corey Long was on uh, Colin Bryant Motorsports. It's Joseph Bryant that's on Colin Bryant Motorsports. So Colin Bryant Motorsports have car have all three cars in the top little gaggle of cars right here. And one of their cars is leading right now, Mark George. Sean Galligan's going to pound that inside line. And as you see, the cars may be looking to try and catch up to these pa this pack right here. That lap car just kind of killed him. Sean Galligan takes the lead with uh, Cole, Cole Lanning right there. Yeah, they're catching up. Slowly but surely, they're catching up. I mean, uh, we didn't see um, Chris Summers in the mix until now. He's back up in the mix. Tay Kovac was... Yeah, they're catching him. Some of the cars that were held up on the high line catch up as quickly. But they might have a chance to catch up. I know a few drivers have already caught up, such as Chris Summers, Dunn the Parade, and um, Chris Bullock back there. Single file? Well, they thought about it, and they said, nah, too boring. So this is like a second pack of cars back there. Navy and Robinson third and points is back there. Sean Galvin's running second, so our points leader may put a cushion on his um, points. Unless Arnold Columbia, which I don't think is in the... Yeah, he's in this front pack, too. So Arnold Columbia could come back up and take the points lead after this race. Or will Seth Cole, or even... Whoa, four wide. Again. Uh, Angel, There's Angel D'Souza. Where'd she come from? I hadn't seen her all day, and now she, there she is. Amazing. Okay, it looks like most of the cars have caught back up. There's Tay Kovac, he's going for the lead. And Jake Cole looks like he's going to step out and go for the lead too. There he is. Yeah, he's got the lead now. Looks like Chris Summers is about to get turned in the outside wall and they're four wide again. Guys, remember what happened the last time you tried to do this? It didn't turn out very so well. Jake Cole just slides right down in front of the uh, 09 of Ryder Suggs. Suggs having a pretty good season. He's had some hard luck, but he still is up at the front most of the time. I know he was involved at a wreck at Charlotte. He was involved in the wreck at Indianapolis. And that was his first race. No, that wasn't his first race in Indianapolis. His first race was, I believe, yeah, his first race was at La Colina. He didn't do too well at La Colina, but it was his first race. But he succeeds at, Roke, uh, at um, Super Speedways, and, well, 
He's at a super speedway. So drive your heart out, buddy. Maybe you can get a win. I saw Colin Cropley back here. Looked like he was going to go off the nose of another car again. They're four wide again. And Colin Cropley is at racing speed. <laughs> Look like the John Worry just puts Chris Bullock out of the way. There's Dunn the Parade trying to hold, maintain his uh, uh, fifth place spot in the points. Let's go back to the second pack and see where third in points is running. It's running 21st. They're catching up to this lead pack though. They are catching up to the lead pack. Slowly, but they're catching. Wow, it looks like Jake Cole just lost the draft a little bit. And that will allow these cars to get the draft off of him. And they'll catch up even more. We're at lap 24 of 29, though. We're getting down to crunch time. Will we have to deal with lap traffic? Oh my goodness, we will again. Last time we all have to deal with lap traffic. Here comes, there's Joseph Lombard again. This might scrunch up the field again. There goes Mark George again to the lead. And here we go. Round two. Oh, we have to slam the brakes. And that allows the high line to get around. Pat Randall and Ricky Tippett get a, get a great bye-bye to the field. Why am I going backwards? I want to go forwards. And now he's up on the high line. But look at this. <laughs> Ricky Tippett and Pat Randall, Alex Cantana, and Jack Nathan. But they are not drafting with each other. These cars, on the other hand, are. They haven't quite got up to the speed again, but most of the cars have gotten around them. So they're they're trying to catch them. And they, they will catch them. Because these cars are barely drafting up here. And the way this track works, the more cars you have in a draft, well, it looks like they're going to try some two-car drafting. Maybe. They're not going nearly as fast as, well, they might be. Seth Cole is leading this pack. But will it be a four-man fight for the finish? We will we'll see. Lap 26 of 29. Four to go. In racing, it's four to go. Still green. After that one wreck. I don't know. These guys are catching, though. 200. Yeah, they're a little faster than these guys up ahead. I don't know. The way they keep switching positions and stuff, it won't be very long until they catch up. If they can catch up. Because look at them. They're all spread out back there. I don't know if they'll catch up or not. So it could be a four-man. I was hoping it wouldn't be, but that you take what you can get. Coming down to lap 27, 29. We might have a new points leader after this. I don't know. We might. Ricky Tippett leading this little tandem right here. Four cars. 202. Yeah, they're actually going, well, maybe not, because they're running 202, too. So, Dunn Parade is leading this little pack right here. I wouldn't call it little, because there's more cars in that pack than this. But, Joseph and Lombard really spread this field out. I don't know if they'll be able to catch him or not. It'll be close if they can. But it's a four car breakaway. Well, it looks like it might be just these four cars that settle it because I don't think that the second pack is going to catch up in time. Unless they hit lap traffic. And I don't think they'll hit lap traffic. Okay, no, they're, these cars are just now entering the wax stretch. These drivers aren't even in the turn yet. We shouldn't run into them. It's pretty bad if your car is slow enough that lap that cars going like a lot slower than the leaders are being lapped by the same are being lapped by those cars. Like if 